if you are into our project videos you might have came across our sending machine yes the one with the broken belt and that requires a step down 120 volt ac supply getting those sending belts is definitely not an issue but getting power out of that lazy induction motor is well i guess you got the point here we can't live without breaking and building stuff so in this video we are going to design and build a disc and belt sending machine that's powered by a brushless hub motor that we are going to salvage from an old hoverboard now before we get our hands dirty we designed the whole unit the structure is going to be made out of 6 mm thick metal sheet there's going to be an 8 inch sending disc and a 2 inch wide sending belt that's powered by a brushless hub motor besides the hub motor there is going to be a pulley attached to the tensioner unit while a pair of pulleys run on both ends of what's going to be the face plate for the sending belt now before we further dive into the design it's time to get our hands dirty cutting all those metal parts since we don't have a cnc right now so what we are going to do is to stick two dimensional layout of each of these parts over the metal sheet and cut them using grinder and jigsaw The next day we started drilling the holes, most of which are going to be threaded later on to hold everything together. The rest of the holes are going to help us cut the slots for sending belt angular plates and the tensioner unit. We used the same power tools as earlier to cut the slots and later finish them using files. One of the reason for using 6mm thick metal sheet is to hold the parts together using the onboard threads within the parts because we are going to avoid welding as it's something that's going to screw us later in this project. Later we finished machining all the parts by enlarging holes into the heavy duty hinge that we have got from our local scrapyard. It's meant to be used for heavy duty doors, well we made sure that it won't.
The next step is to bend, I mean to weld everything together. We love modular designs that not only offers working flexibility but it also offers more accuracy but due to some limitations we had to weld a bunch of parts together. Now once we started welding everything together it was thermal expansion that punched us right in the face. So we re-welded everything but still there is visible bending that we have noticed later in the base plate and to minimize the errors we had to do a lot of troubleshooting. Later we received the shaft for tensioner pulley and the motor mounting bush that are already machined so we drilled a bunch of holes and did some tapping. Now the last push to pull this project came from what seems like a conveyor assembly that we have got from our local scrapyard. Each pulley offered a slight taper which is essential for self-centering of belts. So we repurposed this unit. The base plate with a pair of pulleys is going to be our face plate and the big pulley is going to be used for the tensioner unit. The tensioner pulley needs a bit of modifications that is to machine bearing slots on either ends so we did that on lathe machine. To make sure we have plenty of power, we decided to use a brushless hub motor that we have salvaged from an old hoverboard. We disassembled the motor as it needs a bunch of modifications before we can use it. The front plate and the drum needs to be flat so that we can mount our send in disc on the front plate and it smoothly runs the belt over the drum. And our on lathe machine got the job done but before we reassembled the motor we need to figure out a way to increase the speed of the motor. These hoverboard motors spin a lot slower than what we need for our sending machine, just 700 rotations per minute. Now for simplicity we are going to use an RC car speed controller that can just handle 6 cells compared to 10 cells in series from hoverboard setup. Now that's further going to decrease the speed of this motor. Rewinding the stator was the solution but it's going to take a lot of time so instead we rewired the original winding. Since it's a three phase motor so each phase has three sets, each set having three poles and all of them connected in series. We rewired the winding so that all three sets are connected in parallel. This makes the current to flow three times as faster compared to the series connection making the motor spin three times faster than the original speed. Here I would love to thank JLCPCB not only for sponsoring this video but to make sure that we pull this modification up to the standard. We designed the PCB for the stator unit and ordered it from JLC PCB. The process to do that is straightforward. All you need to do is to upload your Gerber files and go through a bunch of options there and you are done. We received the PCBs within just a week and as always the product quality is exceptional. It's over 3 years since our first collaboration and not even a single glitch in their services and product quality. So, JLC PCB, we do highly recommend them. Go check out their website, the link is in the description. Before we solder the PCB, we trimmed the coil and removed the enamel coating. Man, that job took ages to complete. Ugh.
Once we are done with that, we soldered the PCB carefully not to damage the winding. Before we reassembled the motor, we drilled the holes into the motor drum for sanding plate mounting and to make the sanding plate, we have used 6mm thick aluminium sheet. Once we are done with the basic structure, we then mounted the faceplate shield. 
to drive this sending machine we are going to use an RC car ESC that's paired with two three cell lithium polymer batteries connected in series the speed controller is controlled using a servo tester both of which are going to be installed inside a 3d printed enclosure later we installed both the sending disk and belt and the unit is ready to get tested as we turned the unit on the belt has started to skid on left side so to fix that we made some adjustment over the tensioner pulley we then started sending over the belt sending bed in vertical position with the variable speed there was sufficient power to send metal bar without the belt stopping sending aluminium sheet was a piece of butter for this thing later we tried the sending disk and got even more power as it's directly attached to the drive unit with the amount of power we are getting we could have placed a 12 inch sending disk over there which would have been more useful as the center part of this disk is not useful at all next we switched the bed to horizontal position and started sending the face of remaining metal sheet from this project now that's something that we can't get done on a sending disk as it sends unevenly throughout its circumference but with this bed we can easily send this metal sheet that's nearly 12 inch wide the only issue we faced is that the belt was touching the bed and as we started sending the metal plate the belt started slipping over the hub motor whereas the motor kept spinning well that's something that we can fix later on as you guys watch this video so consider subscribing if you love this belt and let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below we'll soon be there with another awesome diy project video